Music defines place in America. I'll have all, all your big leg women when you love me. And black music also defines times and circumstance. All the way from the Mississippi Delta through the violent streets of East Los Angeles. And on to the big time. And while you might have heard some of that, chances are you haven't heard this. You're listening to an obscure artist called Little Benny, playing an obscure brand of music, Go-Go. A big sound that plays in a confined space. The black neighbourhoods of Washington, D.C. They call D.C. Chocolate City, and Go-Go is the soundtrack of the Chocolate City. It's the heartbeat of the city. It is the fabric of the culture of people who live here. Different political administrations might come and go, but for the folks who stay here and who live here year after year, generation after generation, Go-Go is part of their identity. It's the musical expression of their identity. For outsiders, Go-Go may not sound very distinctive at all. It's difficult to pick the difference between it and a cacophony of other contemporary black music. But there are differences, and even the tin-eared among Washington's African-American community hear them. You can't even come in this city and not want to hear it because it's talked about so much. It's a part of this city. We breathe it, we bleed it. It's a part of us. In Chi Ali's go-go band, the basic ingredients are a line of conga drums and grim experiences to feed the stories in the lyrics. It was just a bad neighborhood to live in. Those times in the 80s to now, it really damaged us as a people in our community. And for me as an outlet, I use the music. As far as um, crack cocaine, I used to sell uh, anywhere from an eighth to a key out here a day. And this building right here, I used to sell hand to hand, no bags. I used to break it off the block. Like many in the go-go scene and those who follow it, Chi Ali grew up in and participated in a drug-addled, crime-ridden world just a bus ride from the White House. I've seen so much death around here that death doesn't faze me. We used to hear gunshots and walk out and see bodies smoking on the ground, steaming from the bullets. We used to see people get their heads shot off. So, I mean, I went through that. The, the youth that's coming up now, they went through that because the stage is becoming worse. And it was very violent out here, very. This, of course, is the Washington most of the world recognises. A city of monuments and symbols of political power. For the first time, there's a black man at the centre of it. But in the neighbourhoods not far from here, on the other side of power, the change they've been craving still hasn't come. The fact is, the black side of the capital is a part of Washington most white residents rarely experience from outside their cars. It's poor, it's urban, and at times, it's extremely violent. For decades, the driving percussion of Go-Go has provided the backbeat in this tough environment. But some believe Go-Go is part of the problem. 
America is a violent country. We found it on violence. And so violence permeates the psychic, and those who are most moved by it happen to be low-income um, low people. Hundreds gathered Wednesday night for a tear-filled vigil on the very spot 24 hours earlier where four young people were killed and five others wounded in a hail of gunfire during a drive-by shooting. My child is there, my only child! Turf wars like this are a common occurrence in a community awash with guns and drugs. Often, the gang violence ricochets off the streets and into the clubs and vice versa. We've had to close down nightclubs because it got too bad outside mostly because people had beefs inside. <laughs> and we live. I live in Washington, D.C. <laughs> I need a place to live. You're supposed to be helping me find a place to live. You need to be the mayor again. Before Barack Obama came to town, this was the black man who galvanised mobilised and inspired his community. Love you, love you, love you. The deeply flawed and controversial former mayor, Marion Barry. What you got in there? Lemonade. I need some of that. Um, no, it's okay, baby. <laughs> you cannot allow violence to take over. Right down in Southwest, two people were killed outside of the club. The club wasn't responsible for that. But who you hold responsible? It happened, the altercation started inside. And so the government in Prince George's County, right next to us, the government in D.C., has been forced by the political pressure and the pressure of the people to close it down. I don't agree with that, but that's where we are. I think we all have a common problem. And instead of the politicians blaming the music or the music blaming the politicians, I think that we should join forces and use this music as a tool to curb the violence in the city. But violence and go-go dance hand in hand. At the clubs we went to during our assignment, there was a heavy police presence. Come on! It didn't do much to dampen the enthusiasm for the music, but the authentic soundtrack of the real Washington is finding it more and more difficult to find a home. It's being forced further and further away from the heart of town. It actually makes my head spin how quickly it's happening. It's pushing out Go-Go from the heart of where it began almost as if Gogo, -Go, which had done so much to bring life to these places, is their services are no longer needed and they're just getting pushed out. There are people who are seen as problems, people are seen as disposable. You just push them away and get them out of sight. In her attic overlooking the Capitol building, Natalie Hopkinson is writing the final draft of her book on the musical life of the Chocolate City. What's happening to Gogo, -Go, she says, is a metaphor for the pain and the pressures experienced by much of the black heart of the city. The music has become an easy target. The DC police have this program called the Go-Go Report, and the signal is, is that we're taking care of that Go-Go problem for you. They're openly doing surveillance of this musical culture, and there's no real consequence for doing that in the city because it's, it is so marginalized and it is so associated with people that either the city doesn't see or they don't want to see. This marginalization of the black underclass is common enough in other big American cities. But this city is the prism through which the nation sees its politics. Surely Washington should lead the way on race relations. Instead, it lags. And the wounds that won't heal were opened in dramatic fashion years ago. The slum dwellers of Washington's inner city found today 
a lack of merchandise, lack of food, in some cases, lack of a place to stay. For many After Martin Luther King was assassinated in 1968, D.C. had one of the worst riots in the country. Oh, there's something very wrong in Washington today. D.C. had considerable uprising and many parts burned. So many fires that some went unfought. The parts that were sort of the segregated black communities burned to a crisp. Mostly the buildings were old, mainly in the downtown ghetto area. Much of the damage was done in the area around U and 14th Streets, the heart of the black business and entertainment districts. Negroes burned down their own house. The anger smoldered in these streets for decades, and the ashes and the rubble of defiance forged a distinctive cultural phenomenon. What Gogo did was it went into those crevices and brought new life to them. Go-Go music filled all of those spaces and played a really important role in just literally bringing life to places where there was none. Over the 30 years since, Go-Go grew, but very little else did. For the average African-American here, life has been one step forward and one or two steps back. I'm proud of our country, no question about that. I'm proud of our city, but I'm not happy with this divide, and it's getting worse. Barry, 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 Barry. Through the 60s and 70s, Marion Barry was a leader in the city's civil rights movement. It was God's power. But as mayor in the 1980s and 90s, he was the personification of the passions, frailties, and failures of his community. America is the biggest consumer of drugs in the world. Gasoline and drugs. <laughs> you know? Well, as you know, <laughs> you've had your own controversies in those of course, areas too. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But thank God I'm here now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you not smoking anything now? In 1990, Mayor Barry, in an infamous FBI sting, was videotaped smoking crack. She said, my many times I'm doing this, I get too hyper. Well, I know, yeah. my size to one piece. I've been shooting it with her, I told you. In this country, certain parts of the federal government, certain political enemies went after me for a long time. But the black community saw persecution in his prosecution. After serving time in prison, Marion Barry was re-elected mayor. What's happening, man? What's happening? Hey, he is the mayor for life. We need you back, man. They're not representing me. We need you back. Today, he remains a councillor, but says he no longer has the energy for the top job. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. All right. That's the man right there. Step on the streets with him, though, and it's clear there's still a lot of love out there for the man who embodied black power in Washington 20 years before Barack Obama. You that looked out for all the young people, you looked out for the old people, they don't do it like that no more, man. All right, we got it. Yeah. Yeah. do it like you did. I know they don't. <laughs> when you go in the area where I represent, you see a different Washington. You see poverty, 54%, unemployment at 35%. You see the highest cancer rate. You see the lowest home ownership rate. 23% home ownership in Ward 8, 65% home ownership in predominantly white Ward 3. And people don't want to talk about that. They want to sweep it under the world. But I talk about it. Now, the civil rights movement was a movement sustained by music, the hymns, of the civil rights movement helped carry the cause of a people and advance the ideals of a nation. Barack Obama, who I supported, voted for, admired. He stands on the shoulders of people like myself who were in the civil rights movement and on the shoulders of Jesse Jackson, who ran for president in 84, uh, have not done enough. To everyone here. The federal government should be putting more money, more help and support. Let the music feed our spirits give us hope and carry us forward as one people and as one nation. Enjoy.
Barack Obama is an iPod president with a keen ear for music, history and change. At a White House concert this year, the president assembled a who's who of recording stars to celebrate the music of the civil rights movement. Many African Americans are pragmatic about what this president might be able to deliver. But many also believe he has a unique responsibility to bridge the fault lines of race in this country. Symbolism is never enough, but I'm going to tell you, this is not a post-racial society, and the president has said that, you know. Barbara Lee chairs the Congressional Black Caucus. She knows, better than most, that there's a heightened expectation from African Americans for this president to deliver, and impatience is growing. The Black Caucus has been in existence for 40 years, and we've always been impatient. When you look at the poverty rates in the African-American community, when you look at economic disparities, when you look at African-American businesses, when you look at the educational gaps, when you look at health disparities, we're going to stay impatient until justice is served. There are people who are trying to act like, oh, it's no big deal. Oh, it's no big thing. But Every time they play a picture of that first family, it's a big deal. When you see a black family in the White House, black mother, black father, two black girls, little dog, black grandmama living in the White House, I mean, when you see that, it says something to the world that is so different than a lot of the images that have been portrayed historically um, through media all over the globe. That in itself is significant, majorly significant, and it causes our young people to be able to dream in ways they never were able to before. If God has done anything for you, I want you to show some kind of sign. Just say glory. Somebody say hallelujah. But I dare you to just think back over all the Lord has done for you. Pastor Tony Lee is one of the more active figures in the Washington Badlands. His services are a collision of gospel and go-go. Glory, 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 glory. It's been pretty amazing what he's been able to do and how his church has grown. You know, he uses go-go as a carrot to bring in the people who he feels like he could help, and he's incredibly effective at it. Because where I go, God goes with me. Is there anybody in the house today that you feel like you're in a bad situation? But I walk wherever I go. Tony Lee's flock is growing, and so is his influence. Because there's something in me, God have mercy. But he counts himself a realist when it comes to Obama's ability to make things better here and in other black neighborhoods. Give your life to Jesus. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. I think that everyone thought that black president comes in and so you're never going to hear anything from the black civil rights establishment because they'll all be so happy. No, he's the president. And so there are going to be needs for them still to be an advocate for our issues um, to push the president to do what needs to happen. Um, does that mean he doesn't want to do it? No, but he needs some political capital to be able to make some stuff happen. He needs some folks grumbling to be able to make some stuff happen, etc. So, yeah, I see him being the president he said he was going to be. The stuff that is happening is either superficial or significant, depending on your hopes. Today on U Street, where the fires of racial rage burned in the 60s, places like Ben's Chili Bowl, a black American culinary institution, have become a tourist attraction. It's said to be the president's favourite burger joint. He even recommends it to other world leaders. I would never in a million years have imagined that the president of the United States and president of France would be sitting in Ben's Chili Bowl. I mean, it's like completely revolutionary. And yet, ever so gradually, depressed neighbourhoods are falling to gentrified developments, pushing Black Washington and its go-go soundtrack out of earshot.
It's enough to send the fallen legends of Gogo spinning in their graves. I, the mayor, on behalf of the whole city, do hereby proclaim that June 2nd, 2010 is Lil Benny Day. <laughs> During our assignment, Little Benny, a go-go superstar in these city limits and relatively unknown elsewhere, passed away. A heart attack, not a gun, and he was just 46. Lil Benny was a seminal figure in go-go, and it was huge, huge shock to the go-go community, and a big loss. Are you from the old school? You remember the words, please say hello. For people who never had a voice, were never acknowledged by anyone in mainstream culture, even in mainstream DC culture, Gogo is that venue. It's that place where you recognize, I exist, I existed, I made a contribution, you know, I was here. Despite the pressures on the people and their music, nobody here is prepared to say Gogo is going to fade away anytime soon. I really don't know. I can't tell you why they hate the music so much. Gogo's a part of DC. You can't even fix your lips to say District of Columbia without speaking Gogo. Well, all right, man. This is Gogo City. We came out with this. We put this on the map here. Ain't nobody do it like DC do it, baby. You'll never stop go go music. Not in this city. If they stop go go music in every club, it'll still be played in this church. How do you stop that? If they stop go-go music at every place, my church attendance would probably go up like four times just because it would be like, well, good God, we can't hear Congo be anywhere else. Let's go to the church. It's a safe place to hear. It's a part of us. It's a part of what we've grown up.